It's Tuesday, October 15th here at the West End Gun Club. I'm actually in the back uh, ranges here on what we would call the 200 yard pad. I'm going to shoot uh, on the 200 yard line that we have over here, which I've never, I don't think I've vlogged it from here before. I might have, but um, I'm going to be shooting over uh, seven different bays, I think, six different bays. So I had to go clear it out and make sure there was, there was no one back there and there was no one. And I sealed the side gate so no one can go forward of the line. And uh, I'm just gonna get set up here. I got this light, um, a Milwaukee light. I bought it from Home Depot. Um, it's one of their battery powered, their M18, 18 volt battery um, systems. Uh, so it's a sight light. I, I know some guys who shoot here on the weekends. They shoot early in the morning in the dark and they use Milwaukee lights. And I use a couple of Milwaukee uh, tools, uh, specifically the uh, impact wrench. And I figure I'll give the uh, sight lights a whirl. So I picked up this floodlight and it's uh, powerful enough. I, I was actually hoping it to be a little stronger, uh, but it's really strong in the dark uh, at night or this early morning pre-dawn. And so it's pretty bright, but in my garage I was testing it and I, it wasn't as bright as I thought it would be. But uh, now that I'm not actually in the, at the range, it, it's pretty bright. So. Um, I might get another one. They're kind of expensive. This was 150, but it came with a battery and then the charger and the battery was like another 150. So I have two batteries, one light and a charger. Um, but it's a little windier today than I had hoped it would be. Um, it was pretty dead wind, uh, according to the weather reports the days before. And I think it's supposed to be like later in the week, but today out of nowhere, it decided just to become windy. So I clocked it around eight miles an hour. And today I'm gonna to be shooting 22 at 200 yards. So uh, it's not ideal conditions, but it's the only day I could take off uh, for the rest of the month. And so this is uh, what I'm gonna do. I'll make, make the best of this range trip. So I'm gonna go ahead and get set up here and uh, we'll wait till the sun comes up and we'll start shooting. It took me a good 20 to 30 minutes to set up my targets, just uh, going out there pacing the distances and then um, spray painting them and then walking back out there with the targets and hammering in this, um, the stands. And uh, now I'm waiting for the uh, guy who cleans up the uh, porta potties, the porta johns. He's uh, cleaned the one behind me on the 200 yard pad right there. And then he's out there for the line right now, cleaning out another one they have in one of the bays. Um, but he's gonna be done in a few minutes. Um, and the lights just coming up too, so it's a good time. Uh, the wind is quieted down a little bit than it was when I got here. It's still strong. I would estimate it's still at about seven, eight miles an hour, maybe 10 gusts. It's probably gonna stay this way all morning with uh, maybe five steady and then with some plus two, plus three gusts. I might take the opportunity right now while the guy's out there to just walk out there and put a couple of wind indicators like my uh, surveyor's tape, um, tape a few or tie a few on my target hangers. So. Um, now that I think about it, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just to give you an idea or overview of where I'm shooting right now, this is the 200 yard pad. This is just sort of a, an area that we have, a silhouette pad that we use for shooting here at the West End Gun Club. Shoots over bays 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So as you can see, logistically, it's kind of um, difficult to shoot here, especially on the weekends because people are using those bays out there. But um, I'm just shooting down this side right here. If I can just line up my camera, I don't have my this is just a wide angle lens right now. That's what I use for video. But I'm just shooting straight down that way. Um, you can probably see some targets, maybe, going down that walkway up there, um, going out to 200. So I think I have it right now at 50, 75, 85, 100, 150, and 200. I think that's what I have it. Um, I'm actually running out of targets. Uh, I could have put another one at 175, I think. Um, I, I don't have enough, I guess I should have spaced out my targets different. I should use the larger targets further down. But um, given it's windy, I wanted to use a little bit slightly larger than I'm used to shooting at distances. So at those distances. So we'll just work with it. Um, if the wind dies down a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and put a paper target out at 200 to figure out um, just to shoot some groups. But I doubt I will. But 
time permitting, I'll go ahead and do that. Anyway, I'm going to bring out the rifle, and the guy who was cleaning out the uh, the porta potties is done. So we're all clear. Veins, the bays are clear. I've locked the side gate so no one can go forward, and we can start shooting. I almost crapped my pants when I was unloading because I thought I left this in the garage. This is a brick of Center X. I actually got two bricks um, of the same lot and a brick of Midas Plus. But I also have more ammo anyway, so I could have just shot whatever, my long range, SK long range, SK rifle match. But I wanted to shoot that new brick of the pool, obviously, or at least shoot some of it. Um, what's in my pocket here? Oh, my flashlight. So I went ahead and uh, I got this larger scope, longer scope coat. I'm still debating whether I'm going to use uh, scope caps, but I went ahead and put my the Kali's uh, sunshade on there. So I now have the sunshade attached. And uh, we'll see how that goes. It was shooting fine without it. Wasn't really in a condition where I needed it, but uh, I bought it for 50 or 60 bucks, so I may as well use it. Um, okay. Maybe I can come down a little bit on the bipod. I'm not really expecting too much today, but I just wanted to come out and shoot. Obviously, shoot some a little bit more distance beyond uh, beyond 200 or sorry 100. And this gives me opportunity with the day. Tuesdays is usually the day when we're uh, we get priority on the back line. So, where people are not supposed to use any of the base forward of the pad, uh, so that we can have the opportunity to shoot on this area. I'm just trying to get an idea of where all my targets are at. All right, so I got 50. Okay, I do need to go taller. So it kind of inclines a little bit. Uh, going up, I'll have to squeeze for 50, but I'm not really gonna shoot 50, just use it as a zero, zero verification target. And then uh, I'll be shooting mainly at 100 beyond. All right, yeah, this is good. Good setting here. Yeah. What else? Um, as far as his gun's concerned, I haven't shot it obviously since the last range vlog because I would have vlogged about it. I think it was October 1st. I was going to take last week off, but I didn't have a chance because what happened at work is my, uh, my boss actually uh, left. He moved to another institution, and so right now I'm actually the interim information security officer because my boss was the chief information security officer left. So now I'm pretty much... Uh, Running things, uh, I'm taking over. I have my duties, obviously, as manager of security operations, but then I'm also uh, now handling the role of information security officer, which is, uh, you know, the title, whatever. Um, I don't actually want the job. The, the recruitment's open right now, so they're trying to hire for somebody, but not applying for it. But I'm just feeling, I'm just sitting in the role, at least until they get a person hired on. And while the title's cool, but the, uh, the job role is just not for me. It's not my objective right now. I prefer to be, I'm more technical, so a lot of my, uh, you know, I prefer, I'm just, you know, my degree in computer science, I'm just not, not looking forward to doing a lot of the uh, political stuff and then the executive level type managerial type deals, you know, working with, uh, and the campus, we would call, you know, there's vice chancellors, chancellors, and then all the other UC uh, executives, so it's a, it's a lot of work there in that regard, and then, you know, you're, you know, at the same time, you have a lot of power, but the same, and on the other side of the coin, you're not, I mean, I like to be in the mix as far as, you know, doing the actual, you know, implementation of things, architecture and design and stuff. And so being the CISO, you're not the CISO, Chief Information Security Officer, you're not in that position to do that. You're, you're the guy directing it, but you're not actually doing it. So, I mean, it's fine if you have great people working under you. And, you know, if I got, if I decided to apply for that job and got it, I have to hire someone to replace me. So, uh, given that we've had a hard time recruiting for somebody, another analyst on my team, uh, which we are also about to to uh, hire, I, we we extended an offer. But given it's difficult to find an end of the analyst on my team, I don't know if it's gonna be how hard it would be or how easy it would be to find a replacement for me in my position. So, anyway, that's kind of that for the personal life stuff. And the wind's starting to pick up. I'm gonna.
So the action on the Voodoo 22 right now so far is still kind of tight on the, when you, with lateral pressure. I'm hoping this thing lubes, uh, smooths out a little bit more, but I think I counted it. Oh, actually, I counted it up. I'm gonna try to tally my uh, round counts as I go along because I wanna make, I wanna see when I get to the thousand round mark. Uh, so I can make that trip out to Mesa for the test out this gun at the Lapua Rimfire Testing Center. So, if I can find my notes here. So 295 rounds plus 170. Yeah, 295 plus 170. So just over four, four, just 465. So not even a brick of ammo yet. Plus the 10 I just shot. What I ended up doing um, is I put a shorter carbon fiber tube for the wiser precision mount. Um, I, e I emailed them and asked them if they made a shorter tube or they had a shorter tube available, but they just said go on Amazon and get a 25 millimeter diameter. So I went on Amazon. Uh, they sold them in pairs, so I got two of them. I can't remember how long that is. It's like over a foot, maybe 14, 6, 15 inches. But the reason why I got the shorter ones because the long one had that weird resonance or vibration on recoil. And since I didn't need all that, that length for this platform, the way I have this rigged up, I, uh, I wanted the shorter one to help reduce that or mitigate that vibration. So we'll see how that works out. I forgot to get my alignment tool, so hopefully I'm not too high above the bore line. Otherwise, I just shot my, uh, I'll just shoot my, uh, my magneto speed uh, bayonet. There you go. Okay, on the Collis, I'm noting some chromatic aberration at 25 power. It's actually very noticeable. Getting some purple fringing around this white target. Could be my eyes, but I'm noticing it. So if I drop down, chromatic aberration should disappear. Yeah, so it's it's going away at 18x. Starts to appear right around 20. 20x you're seeing it. That's interesting. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I do see some chromatic aberration around the white target. You could, chromatic aberration. Uh, if I remember correctly, I honestly have to look it up, but basically I don't remember what it exactly means, but the side effect of it is, or how you notice it, is that you see purple fringing around, um, objects, uh, with different contrast of, with, uh, compared to the background around it. So I have a white steel target with a dirt backdrop. And so I'm seeing this purple fringing, uh, effect around the target. So you'll notice a lot in photography. Um, especially when you shoot wide angle, uh, sorry, if you shoot wide aperture lenses, so like F1.4, F1.2, purple fringe or the chromatic aberration is prevalent at the highest aperture opening. And so here it's obvious, it's evident that you're having the same effect with the highest magnification on the scope. So, uh, anyway, it's a cool morning. No, very, uh, still, still, uh, sh I guess dim rather shaded um in the sun i don't notice this so interesting i'll make note of it when i uh i need to write a review of the collis um after i get more time behind it but definitely noticeable so we're gonna gonna push out to 150 which is 4.2 five rounds You can just barely see that target out there. It's uh, obscured by the berm.
So keeping going on, that's 30 shots fired. Uh, 8.3 SD, that's pretty good, average 1094. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot another string of fire at 200 before I walk out there and do some rearrangement of the targets or shuffling of targets. Uh, take advantage of uh, the time here and maybe set up my 200, uh, set up my target stand at 200 to sh try to shoot a group. But according to this, I need 6.93. So we'll do 6.9. Target of shooting out there is pretty big, it's an 8x8, so shouldn't miss the 200, or I should not miss the 200, uh, even with this wind. No one I missed. Okay. I want to say I'm shooting underneath it. Interesting. Okay. 6.93. I'm at 6.9. Let's do 7. I'm going to favor right of target. Hit. Okay, the wind's blowing me way left. So I'm going to hold left edge, or right edge, sorry. There you go. Barely hit. Okay. Interesting. So during the most of that string of fire, I was holding right edge. I've got 0.1 left on the gun but I held right edge, so I should have probably took off. But anyway, I was holding right edge, which gave me, these are two tenths of a mil hash marks. That was about six tenths of a mil, roughly three tenths, four tenths of a mil, four tenths of a mil holdover. Anyway, let's go ahead and go out there, shuffle targets. But uh, that being said, 40 round string, average of 1094, standard deviation 8.8, .8, which is pretty good for, uh, for Rimfire, 8.8, I'll take that. I've shuffled the targets a little bit. The winds have picked up significantly, so I didn't put my paper target out there. Um, but right now you're seeing in the frame of view that I put the long lens on, four targets. Far left is 100 yards, bottom center is 125, far right's 150, top center is 175. And I'm just trying to update my Custrel here. So right now, current conditions at 100. I need 1.78, so I'm going to go 1.8. So I put 1.8 on 178. High on target. There it goes. See it. Wind is definitely affecting this round at 100. Missed. Yeah, I can see it pick up like the wind. It, the bullet looked like it sailed over. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to 125, which is 2.93. So I'm gonna go 2.9. I'm going to favor right of target. Yeah, didn't need to. Holding center. Yeah. All right, five for five on 125. Moving on to 150, which is about. Sorry, I need a four, 417, so we'll do 4.1. Dead center, a little high.
Dead center, low. Dead center. Okay, five for five on 150. 175 is gonna be 549. So we'll do 55. Five. Dead center. Center high. Center high. Right center, sorry, right mid. Center high. So five for five. 175. The wind is definitely affecting it. I'm not going to be able to shoot groups today. Um, seeing the huge variances though on my impacts. It's all depending on the wind. So busting out a new, opening up the new brick of Center X. Uh, hopefully it's shooting on. Um, it's at least the same as the others. I'm going to go ahead and reset my magneto speed. So let me write this down, see if the velocities are any different. So we're talking 56 round string, 1095 average, 1078 min, 1115 max, 8.7 8 SD, which is really good. That's the old lot. So let's go ahead and archive this series. So series 27. Gonna go ahead and start off a new string of fire. We'll shoot at 200 according to the Kestrel conditions. Need 6.8, so I'm at 6.8. So 6.88, I'm at 6.8. Uh, and my bipod came loose. Interesting. All right. That's weird. Came loose. Okay. All right. So I'm still seeing a slight chromatic aberration because you got the high contrast white target being lit by the sun. Um, it's very slight purple fringing that's visible even with my sunglasses. All right. Not sure, I think the wind is going left to right, but it's all weird in this canyon here. I'm gonna shoot dead center. I saw that round impact. Shot six shot error, sensor two crossing bad. Uh, okay. Not sure if that's the, ma the magneto speed is not detecting the round, but that was a good hit. I saw the bullet ricochet off that target. Holding dead center. Okay, that round picked up. It's so weird to be able to see the bullet land, or like bullet and flight and ricochet at the same time. Um, Cause this round is moving so slow when it finally gets out there. Okay, I knew the wind was gonna pick that one up. I was gonna hold for a lip, but. Wind's definitely picking it up. The SDs on this one's larger, 15.7. Huh. These rounds are moving faster, 1120.
1105. Interesting. This is a quick look at the 150 yard target. Not bad. Uh, aside from that one on the edge, the wind caught, I saw it catch that and I barely hit the steel. That's a decent one and a half inch group, 150 yards. Maybe two. Eh, two inches with the high winds. I'll accept that. Rim fire it beyond 100 yards. It gets real sketchy. And this is with the new lot of Lapua Center X. And then uh, I shot a bunch. Sorry, that was the old lot Center X. This is the new lot at 200. See, it's pretty good spread. I, I sailed one over to the top. So I missed one out of like 38 rounds I fired. 39 rounds, 39. 39 rounds fired, I sailed one over the top. This is an eight by eight. So there's nothing to write home about. Uh, but you can see where the it's kind of favoring this this portion right here and then i'm sailing a couple underneath and i sail one over the top but it's favoring right about here gonna shoot a few more strings at 200. uh the barrel's kind of cooled down uh kestrel bringing it back online i'm gonna go ahead and adjust my average on this one's 11.07 so that's the cool thing about the Kestrel with the ballistic calculator, you can update everything real time. And I'm gonna go ahead and just do 10, instead of 1090, we'll do 1107, my average. And based on that, calculator is gonna go ahead and give me new readings. So 200, I need 6.74, 6.7. So I'm gonna dial down a tenth of a mil. It's a 6.7, also 6.8. Find my target again. There we go. High into the right. Dead center. Dead center. High center. Right mid. Right mid. Right mid. Right mid. I'm gonna favor a left target. I'm gonna shoot left center. A halfway. So I need about two tenths of a mil. Four tenths of a mil. Favoring left of the target. So far with the new lot, um, this 56 round string, uh, 56 round aggregate, and missed a few rounds. But we're looking at 11 SD, 11.5, average 11.06. So the average has gone up by about eight feet per second on this new lot. Uh, yeah, have to keep an eye on this. SDs are worse by about three feet per second. Still acceptable for rim fire, but does 8.8, .8, that 8.8 .8 SD was a lot better. I'm gonna go ahead and, um, I'm gonna switch to SK long range to see how that goes because I was actually having decent results with that. Uh, but I wanna see what it looks like now at 200. Um, but I'm gonna go out there and repaint that so I can get a better indicator of how it's shooting. I'm gonna go ahead and rock some SK long range match. 
Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot on 50, just to make sure I'm relatively zeroed. Um, and then we'll go from there. Uh, I need to reset the, the magneto speed so we can get some accurate velocities by which we can adjust the Kestrel to. I just blew down my target. Oh, I missed that one. All right, we'll accept that. I think we're okay. But given the velocities, 10 rounds, 10.3 SD, average of 11.07, which is basically the same as the Center X. So I guess we can just use the Center X data. Granted, I think the, the, the BC should be the same for both bullets, roughly. So right now we got 11.7 entered on here. Because go stretch on 100, we need 1.73. So we'll do 1.7. Let's fly is coming out right now. So we are at 100, let's do 125 at 285, 2.85, so let's do 2.8, 125. Do I have 125? Yeah, 125, that's 125 right there. All right, let's see where we're at. Let's five five rounds here. Still hitting right edge of target. Still hitting right edge of target. No matter what I do, I'm hitting right edge. There it goes. There it goes. goes five rounds there let's go and push out to 150 which gives us 406 let's do four still right of target right of target Wind is definitely playing with that bullet. All right, let's fly for five. Let's move out to 175, which is 536. Do 54. If I can find my 175 target. Dive back out here. Here we go. 175. Over the right side, I'm going to favor left edge target. We caught that one. Now it's all left of target. Man, this round, I can just see it curving. Man, 
Man, missing it. Wind's getting worse. So 40 round string, average of 11.09, SDO 13.3. All right, we're gonna try to shoot 10 rounds on the 200 with SK long range match. Kestrel has me running at 674, so we'll dial 67. See how this holds. Wind has not been good to me. I'm gonna dial 5 tenths left. Shooting center. Missed to the right. I'm gonna favor right, left edge target. Still hitting right. So missed one, but so I had five tenths on the gun already, five tenths and I'm holding left edge, which gives me an additional four to six tenths of a mil. So the right now, the wind with SK long range match is a full left, one mil left. Just to give you an idea of the wind right now, uh, we're pushing 10, 11, spikes to 13 on occasion. Um, but this explains all the variance I'm getting at 200 yards with the rimfire. Um, it's getting pretty rough out there to shoot 22 at 200 yards. in all the targets but I just wanted to show off the 200 yard with SK long range match and don't let this fool you uh, this is actually where I started to center everything up after I dialed one tenth one full mil left to account for the wind and the rest of this I shot off the barricade so I was drifting a little bit right when I was shooting off the barricade um, using the uh, game changer bag with the rail changer X system from our era 419 but uh, yeah SK long range match shoots pretty well uh, it'll hold elevation pretty good, so as long as you account for that wind, that wind was rough. Anyway, I'm going to pack up the rest of my gear and I'm going to open up the open up the line because I know people want to shoot. So I think the, all the bays behind me are occupied. So and plus you're supposed to clear this out at 10, and it's like 9:45. So we'll pack up and I'll open up the gate. Gears all packed up ready to roll out just pulled over on the rimfire side of the facility and no one's here it's nice and quiet here the wind definitely picked up even more i didn't bust the kester out but i assume it was hitting at least 15 gusts uh, it was blowing pretty good so i had to get all my gear in the in the jeep before it all blew away as far as all like the uh, little things like my gloves and ammo boxes and stuff so uh today was a okay day i mean it was windy not ideal i would have liked to shoot some groups at 200 but didn't transpire was able to at least get some rounds down range. Um, pretty much the ammo performs as I expect. Aside from groups, the the uh, the drop uh, at distance is working out based on the coordinate of the Kestrel. So if I was going to shoot a match, you know, NRL 22 or anything like that, at the 200 yards, I can feel confident that the Kestrel is going to give me accurate data and my ballistic drop will be right on within at least a tenth of a mil. So 
that's all I really kind of wanted to know today. Um, Center X, that new lot, uh, is a little bit worse than the old lot, and it shoots a little bit hotter, about 8 to 10 feet per second. Um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of it for today. I'm going to write an article, an update on the Voodoo, pretty much what's going on so far as far as my group testing, which was very little so far, group testing at 100 yards. Um, my experience at 200, any kind of nuances that I've discovered. But I just wanted to give an update. Hopefully I can get out to 200 again when it's not windy and I can try to shoot some groups. And maybe I'll go to Palmdale to do it so I can shoot some 300 and 400 with the Voodoo 22. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go home. There's actually a meeting on uh, work that I was invited to because of my new role as interim interim chief or interim information security officer not a chief information security officer officer but interim information security officer so um there's a meeting at 1300 uh it's i can't i don't know what the uh, acronym stands for but basically it's a it's kind of a threat assessment meeting for all of campus i think in general uh they talk talk about emergency type stuff and so uh in the information security office or cybersecurity, my boss would go there and like give kind of just threat updates of what's happening as far as the cybersecurity landscape because what affects campus because a lot of stuff goes on in campus not just technical um, security threats but social security threats you know social engineering that's like the big thing I mean as far as how I mean the weakness is always going to be the person so you can find the weak link is the the people who are willing or can be tricked into giving up information so I might show up to that I think I have time to go home ditch my gear, take a shower, and get lunch, and head over there just to drop in on it. Um, uh, I'll sh if I can, I'll shoot the uh, UCPD chief of police that I'm going to attend because he's the guy who kind of coordinates that. So anyway, um, that's kind of it for today. Today is October 15th, Tuesday at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching the vlog, and I'll see you in the next one.